<laughs> and not be like the brightest struggle. I'm clicking the button, so we are going to be live, and we're live. All right, welcome everyone to when series get epic. Uh, this is the last day of QuarantCon 2021, about which we are sad. Uh, I am also a little bit happy and relieved because it means we've gotten to the last day of QuarantCon without, so far, touch wood, um, no major mistakes on uh, anyone's part yet. So yay. I'm just waiting for the tech to like blow up in my face. Um, <laughs> but so far, so good. So um, we're here with a really amazing lineup of, of guests, uh, panelists for you. Um, and we're here to talk about series that go along and why we love them or don't. Um, presumably everyone here at least somewhat loves them because we're all writing them or have written them. So um, we're, we're gonna talk about that. Uh, as far as uh, folks in the audience go, you're welcome to chime in with you know how you feel about series being long or short. Um, please put your questions into the live chat for us and I will get to those as soon as we're, uh, whenever we hit a lull in conversation. Um, we're gonna start <clears throat> with intros. Um, and uh, I was probably supposed to do a little spiel about you know other corn con stuff, but it's the last day of the con. If you don't know where to find all the information, what are you even doing with yourselves? Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding, corncon2020.com. Uh, check out the schedule, there's merch and um, there's all kinds of other fun stuff there. And we'll talk more about that right at the end because there's nothing on immediately after us so I can rattle at you for that. But we're gonna start with intros. Uh, so everyone uh, in the panel, I would love to know um, first your name that you'd like us to, to call you versus your actual pen name where people can find your work. Um, where you live just in the world, you don't, you know, we don't need street addresses or anything, but like what country are you in? And if, if you feel like it, what city? Um, and then your books, tell us about the, the, do you have more than one series? Do you have, you know, just the one series? How many books in each series? You don't have to list off all the titles, but just uh, name of series and the number of books within would be great. Um, so I'm gonna go around um, just in the, the order that people appear to me, which I believe is how people are sort of projected on the, the screen over here. Um, so first up, Jenny. Boy. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, uh, yes. Hello, I am Jenny. I write under the name J.R. Frontera, which is just my initials. Um, but yes, please call me Jenny if you're talking to me, not J.R. Um, but uh, yeah, so I uh, live near Kansas City, Missouri in the United States. So I'm kind of smack dab in the middle of the country. Um, it's kind of useful actually for traveling because everything is kind of in, kind of in the same distance. Um, but anyway, yeah, and as far as my books go, I write uh, primarily science fiction and fantasy, although basically every flavor of science fiction and fantasy pretty much. Um, I do have ideas for other genres as well, but I haven't gotten to those yet. So kind of I'm all over the place. Uh, my big series though, um, the biggest one I have right now is the uh, Legacy of Lucky Logan series. It's actually like a sci-fi uh, western series and currently the main core series is uh, six books planned to be six books long uh, but then I actually have like three spin-off series uh, planned so same universe but they're revolving around different characters um, so I have one that's going to be like centers around a bounty hunter I have one that's like a vigilante type of a series uh, and then I have another one um, that's going to be like a reverse harem genre. I don't know if you guys know what that is. If not, you can look it up. But um, so it kind of like all spins off this core series. So that's definitely the biggest world I have right now. Uh, and then I also have a, a romantic epic fantasy series in the works, which right now actually is probably only going to be like a trilogy, but the books are just each massive books. And then... We'll see what happens uh, there, <laughs> but right now those are my two my two main th main main things. <laughs> awesome, thank you, Jenny. Okay, uh, next up again, where I'm going to go by the YouTube display. Next up is Levi. Hey y'all, I'm Levi. Um, I write. I've got two main series. One is this lady, daughter of blood and fury. Um, this is a series I'm writing right now as Levi Jacob. Um, it's like a YA epic fantasy, um, and then as L.W. Jacobs have got um, the Empire of Resonance series. Um, that one's four books long and probably should have more, but I'm not actively writing it right now. Um, and the Tidecaller Chronicles, that first one that I'm writing as me, 
um, is the second book comes out this month and it's planned to be a trilogy of trilogies. So three sets of three um, with each the book four and book seven are places where you can start from scratch if you haven't read the previous trilogy or trilogies. So it's kind of a thing that I'm experimenting with. Um, I live in Colorado, originally from North Dakota, not too far from the wintry place where Virginia lives. Um, yeah, so excited to be here. Thanks, Levi. And uh, funny, I, like you're from close to where I live now and I'm from True. Colorado. So we've essentially traded places. Um, I'm only- I don't want to trade Colorado, again. But oh, that's fair. I don't, <laughs> I don't blame you. Um, next up in our, in our going around the YouTube circle, uh, we're going to go, so we've gone all the way to the right. We're going to go down. So Tao. Hi, I'm Tao. Uh, I live up in uh, the White Horse Yukon, which is all the way up in uh, Canada. Uh, it's still a frozen hellhole right now. Um, we've got about this much snow. <laughs> so yeah, it's fun. Um, I write a whole bunch of different series. I have currently five major series uh, and then a couple more in overlap forms uh, and a couple of co-author projects. This is my co one of my co-author projects. Uh, mostly I write in Gamelet and Let RPG uh, with a uh, Xianxia fantasy, so Asian fantasy book, which is this one. Uh, this has five books out right now, well, four books, and I'm getting a fifth one releasing probably on May 1st. And this is my biggest series by far, uh, which is a system apocalypse. And if you can read that, that's book 10. Uh, yeah. Very cool. Um, I have to say when I, when Levi first floated the ideas for this series, this was your idea, right, Levi? You, yeah. you proposed this, this panel. panel. Um, like, one of the first authors that occurred to me was Tao because I was like, who do I know who has long, long series? And I was like, wait, Tao does, he has multiple long series. Like, yes. <laughs> um, and, and other great ideas were, were floated uh, after that. But that was like the first thing that came to mind. Just like so many books. Okay. Um, so next up in the YouTube order of things is Eve. Hi, Hi everybody. I am Eve. Um, I write under the pen name Dixon Rule. I'm coming to you from Dublin, Ireland, if you couldn't tell by the accents at all. Um, I write mostly SFF. I'm in the middle of my very first series, which is called Blood Brute, which is all about uh, vampires in a zombie apocalypse. So the first title, Rise of One, that was published in December 2020, which feels like a lifetime ago. Anything in the pandemic just feels like a lifetime ago. Um, so that's book one. Book two is out this summer. And then book three is out in the winter. It's a five book series and there's two prequels as well to it. So I'm kind of a noob in the world of big series, but big plans on the horizon. <laughs> Brilliant. And that's part of why I wanted you to join us. I love the idea of having someone who's just in the, the middle of, of a big series and hasn't yet gotten to the later books. So we can talk about regrets. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 no, but to, 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 I mean, personally, like the, the longest series I've written is done. And so it's, I think it's always nice to have um, someone who's, you know, closer to the beginning. And now we've got, and I think a few of us are in the middle of other long series. And anyway, it's nice to just have all Yeah, no, I can't wait to hear what everyone else has to say as well. <laughs> and kind of take notes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's great. Okay. And uh, last but certainly not least, Wendy. Hi, I'm Wendy. I write as W.R. Gingell. Uh, I've got multiple series at the moment. Um, I, I write in multiple genres as well. I get, I get bored very easily. Uh, so I've got science fiction, time travel. Uh, a trilogy of trilogies is what it's actually planned to be, just like Levi was talking about earlier. Um, I, I've written the first three, and uh, unlike Levi, mine can't be jumped into because it's time travel. So you definitely have to start at the start. I can't promise you'll be any less confused, but at least, at least you still will be able to hopefully, hopefully understand a little bit more. So my science fiction series is called A Time Traveler's Best Friend. I've also got a fairy tale retelling uh, mashup type series of five books currently uh, called the Two Monarchy series. There will be one more book in that series and maybe a few novellas as I go. Um, I've got a high-ish fantasy 
trilogy of novellas called the Shards of the Broken Sword trilogy um, and a couple of standalones as well. But my really long series that I'm writing is a series of 10 books Um, the City Between series, which is urban fantasy set in the city of Hobart in Tasmania, Australia, which is, of course, very near to where I live. I live in um, Tasmania, Australia. And although I live in the Huon Valley rather than Hobart, I go to Hobart often and I'm very, very fond of the mix of old and new architecture there as well as just the general vibe. So I decided to set a series there and write 10 books in it. And I am currently writing books is it book eight? Yeah, I'm writing book eight at the moment. I've, I've only got two more books to go in the series, but I do have plans for a spin-off series uh, after that of five books. So I'm not done with the longer series. I actually never thought I would write long series because I was more of a standalone novel sort of person. But here I am, I'm eight books in <laughs> and two books to go and another five to come. So yeah, that's me. That's my books. Uh, it's good to be here. Hi to everyone. <laughs> uh, brilliant, Wendy, because that leads us very nicely into the question of why write longer series? So uh, the very first question we're going to talk about, uh, and this is one that I think I would like uh, everyone to answer at least a little bit, like why, what pulled you into writing a longer series? Was it an accident? <laughs> was, it, um, was it Was it intentional? Was it just, you know, the story idea that came just needed that many books to be told? Was it a marketing choice? Um, you know, there's all sorts of reasons and I'd love to hear what everyone's are. Oh, I should also probably introduce myself. All right. Um, quick, just before we do that. Uh, so I'm Virginia McLean. Um, And I write, I have two series. I have one that's completed. It's a humorous urban fantasy satire. um, And it is very much um, tongue in cheek the entire way through. Uh, It's the Victoria Marmot series. It's five short books long. um, So each of those are between um, 40 and and 50,000 words, basically. Actually, the the very last one's like 53,000, but they're, they're all quite short. Um, and then I have my, my epic fantasy series, uh, which is uh, the Chronicles of Gensokai, which is complicated because it's sort of like linked standalones. And then it's also, there's a new series that I'm sort of sub series that I'm kicking off. It's all in the same world. There's a little bit of crossover of characters, but it follows a new main cast. Um, and that the first book in that sub series is releasing on uh, May 7th um, called Cyrus Claw. Um, and so that and that world, I have so many ideas for different parts of that world's history and different places in that world. And so there's just like that could kind of go on indefinitely. Victoria Marmot is very much like done. Like the, the, the story with those characters is finished. That universe is still something I could go back and play in, but it's kind of finished. Uh, anyway, I currently live in Winnipeg, Manitoba, which is, um, I, well, I'm tempted to show you, but I don't think it'll work out very well with the camera. It's very snowy outside, um, <clears throat> even though it's April. And it was like sunny enough, enough to be in shorts and a t-shirt um, two days ago, but that's Winnipeg in spring for you. And so that is me. And now we will have everyone answer the question of why write longer series uh, and uh, sort of free for all. We start with whoever feels inspired to answer first. Um, I personally didn't actually want to write a long series. Um, that It's not my bag. Like I said earlier, I actually really like writing standalones, especially interlinked standalones, because as soon as I start writing series, um, things get very complicated. I'm not a plotter. I'm a pantser. But I had an idea that I had been thinking about for a very, very long time since I was about 14, 15. Um, I just didn't have a structure in which to place that story uh, until I was very much older. And by the time I had that, I also had a structure I wanted to play with in terms of I had just recently started learning Korean and as an adjunct to that, of course, I was starting to watch Korean media, which was mostly it's K-dramas, but there's movies as well. Um, So the storytelling conventions are very, very different um, in Eastern versus Western media. Um, In particular, I really love what they do with their... um, with their episodic dramas, they um, the way they draw people in and keep them watching to the next um, to the next episode, and I wanted to experiment with that and see if I could use that in a useful way in a longer series. So I decided to do it as a series of ten books. I knew who was the bad guy. I knew 
possibly who would be the romantic interest eventually. And I knew the ending of the main conflict. Um, but apart from that, I knew very little apart from the fact that I wanted to experiment with that style of storytelling that really um, builds at the end, like it will tell a complete story in each book, but then to bring the reader back again, it will open a new can of worms um, and just uh, dare you to come back and read the next book or or just at least leave you still thinking about the book so that you wanted to keep reading. I wanted to be able to um, really focus on the characters. And, yeah, so I ended up writing, yeah, a 10-book series, which I didn't really want to do in the first place. But, yeah, that was me. Are you finding that you're enjoying it now? Like you're, you're, you're eight books So much. Now? Okay. All right. so it's, it was I love it so much. I love these characters. Like I, I knew that there were characters I would enjoy uh, writing, keeping on writing about. I, I needed to make them strong enough and enjoyable enough for myself so that I would still be enjoying them to this extent. So in pursuit of that, they started out as very imperfect um, characters so that I could gradually grow them grow them up and still enjoy their progress gotcha that that's actually that's one of our, our next topics too but I, before we dive into <laughs> that i'd like to hear from a few more pe folks about why um yeah why why long series what what drew you to them or didn't um, well i was gonna say that's so interesting that you say that wendy um it was i have always liked longer stories and longer series just um even as like a reader i just really like the complexity that you can get with longer books and series as a whole, because you don't, like you said, you can have, you know, messed up, really messed up characters. And then you have a long time to like, you know, work with their character arc, or you have a long time to like set up your world, build or build your world, reveal your world. So you're not as tempted to just dump it all, you know, in, in one go. Um, but, uh, I can almost not write standalones. I've tried before, uh, but I don't try too hard because, you know, series sell better. So I'm like, well, if I, this is what I want to write anyway, then why not just embrace it? Because they sell better anyway. And you can get, you know, that read through um, can really, can really help your, your sales efforts. Um, but what you said about how they like wrap up a story and then open a new can of worms, that's so interesting because that's also what I've been doing with my current series. Uh, but I didn't, I have not watched K-drama, so I just, <laughs> but I noticed that in some of the TV, some of my favorite TV series that I just watch in general, and I'd be like, ah, because they, you know, they open it up and then, oh, that's the end of the episode. And I'm like, what, are you serious? And then of course you have to watch the next one. So I've also been trying that. Yeah. I've been trying that as well. I've, I've had some mixed results, so I don't know if <laughs> we can there's talk always about a, There's always a danger with the with yeah. cliffhanger-ish. Yeah. Yeah. And um, it's not even, it's not like a hard cliffhanger, you know, I don't just chop it off mid scene, right. but there's still some people but who people are, are still unhappy. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I've still had some people complain like, what? This is like half a book. I'm like, no, it is not. <laughs> <laughs> I read but, the box threads. You didn't even count. Yeah. 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 Um, but so. <laughs> awesome. So let's hear from um, from our, our three other panelists about about why long series, and then we'll and then we will absolutely dive into these questions that are that are coming up. I'm actually going to make some notes while everybody. Um, for me, I talking about the System Apocalypse uh, series, uh, the twelve, the ten book series. There's well, ten now, twelve in total. Um, I realized I had to write a long series because the series was. Um, it starts out on in Whitehorse and then it goes global and eventually it goes galactic. And I realized I couldn't fit everything I had to say, you know, just pure world building by itself would not fit in, you know, a three book series or five book series. They had to go. Um, and so I knew it was going to be a long series. Once I realized I had to, I, once I realized what the final question and the main theme of the book was, I, plotted out how many books I needed, you know, what each of it, um, instead of a trilogy of trilogies, I ended up with four uh, quartet of trilogies, quartet I guess trilogies. that's it. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
and I, that's where it is. It's it worked out mostly okay uh, so far. It's I'm surprised. Um, I did the same thing with my A Thousand Lee series uh, because that goes from human to mortal to immortal, and I'm realizing a quartet of trilogies might not work out. I need more, probably more, which is insane. Um, <laughs> there you go. The, um, the insanity we set ourselves up for. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Um, on a, oh, go ahead. On a smaller scale, um, thinking of the Blood Brute series myself, I really wanted that. Like they start off in this beautiful, green, peaceful, safe world. And then the world ends and they go off out into this horrible, rotten, grey, bleh. Then they come back to the green land again. And it's that, that everything that has changed and everything that is unchanged at the same time. That's kind of what came to me and as Blood Brute developed. So can't do that in one book. And I didn't want to go for three. Even that seemed ever so slightly too small. I think I'm a first time, like uh, Blood Brute is my debut book as well. So, and an indie author and new. So I was like, okay, five is a good round number. Not a round number. It's a good long number for the lead in into a series, but yet without overstraining myself. Cause I think we have to think of ourselves as well as we write, obviously mm. we can plan these huge galactic scale series. We do have to mind ourselves as well, I think. So five for me, that's there and back again. That's what I went for. <laughs> that seems reasonable. Yeah, um, I feel like I've been, I've been holding back from writing longer series uh, because I'm sort of like, I just grew up reading epic fantasy. And so like the Wheel of Time or the Belgariad or these like, like five books was a short series, even in these traditionally published realms. And that's just like the story that my my brain became uh, fascinated with. And so I started off trying to write short stories and they read like novels. And as soon as I wrote a novel, I read like the beginning of a series. Um, and so far my series are unended. And when I like put a number on the end, it's kind of like, I'm really hoping to tie it up by this number, partially because I might lose passion for it, but partially because like this, I think the thing about writing epic fantasy is that a lot of people, they read it because they're fascinated with the setting. And a lot of times the setting is the thing that becomes at stake is that like the stakes always become like world ending or world threatening or universe threatening. And you can't believably tell that story in a single book like the like the MCU they had to build up to Avengers Endgame for a long time so they would believe it and care about all the characters and I feel like it's sort of an expectation in epic fantasy that the stakes will get that epic and I don't think that you could really pull it off unless your one book was like well there's still a thousand pages even though there's ten of them <laughs> so I think I just was trained to imagine stories this big and here I am writing them yeah fair enough um <clears throat> my whole I had some weird choices that put me into the writing the Victoria Marmot series, which is so far my longest series. Um, it was it's it was a combination of I had a story idea for a web serial, and then I had the idea that that I was like, oh man, everybody's talking about like quick release, and and I should do a series that I can do in like short books that I release quickly, um, and maybe I'll pre-write them, and maybe I'll you know like I had these these plans. Um, I did pre-write the first three books in the trilogy together and then release them. And then I planned to go like five, six right after that did not happen. Um, lots of personal stuff in my life got in the way of that. And so a year later, I released books five and six right on top of each other. And basically none of that went the way that I wanted it to go in terms of, of advertising, building audience, et cetera. Um, but interestingly, the omnibus, like all five books together seems to sell pretty well. Um, so that's kind of, I mean, pretty well, this is all relative, right? I, you know, none of my books are selling all that well, but, um, uh, but, but people do pick it up as an omnibus more often than they do, um, as individual books, uh, which works fine for me. And, um, especially actually works nicely in KU. Uh, and then in my other series, like I, Blade's Edge, I never planned to write more after, but as soon as I finished writing book one, I had an idea for book two and, then once I finished that, I was like, well, you know, that's pretty much wrapped that story. But then I had more ideas for other books in that same world with different characters. And so like I have at this point, it seems like it's going to be multiple duologies all set in the same world. Um, and I'll, I like currently in my head, 
like I've got books, we'll call them three and four, but like planned out. And then there's like five and six, but they're actually like a thousand years before the start of Blade's Edge. <laughs> um, anyway, so it's going to be bouncing all around, but that's more just like the universe. And I feel weird even calling it a series, but but I think readers will think of it as a series. And again, setting, if, if that's a thing that we're talking about. So, okay, we've established why uh, we all sort of fell into writing longer series um, or, or kind of didn't. <laughs> um, and uh, and so now, like one of the things we just touched on, a, a lot of us was was how to keep the story moving for readers, and then also how to keep the story moving for yourself, like your own investment in writing longer series of, of books. Like I, I think a couple people touched on the fact that you know planning out more than ten books was maybe going to be um, feel like it was taking on too much or, or things like that. And I do think that, you know, like also like planning versus pantsing, I think comes into play here too. Um, I've heard the slanderous accusation that, uh, that pantsers cannot do long series, which I would very strongly object to. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I, uh, I, I want to throw that out as being completely false. I am very much a pantser. I have become a little bit of a planter because there are series details you need to like, keep tabs on. But, um, but I would argue that pantsers can absolutely write long series. But, but how do you feel about like what, what keeps are the things you do to keep readers interested also things that keep you interested? Are they different tactics? How, like when it comes to keeping interest, yours or someone else's, how do you roll? Well, yeah. I'm a pantser, uh, pretty much. Uh, as I said, I plotted out where each of the books are and what roughly each book was going to be about. And I've known my ending since book one. Uh, I actually have it written out for the final scene, just in case I get hit by a bus or something. Uh, <laughs> but um, the, but I don't know what happens in a book itself. Generally, when I arrive at the book, I'll have a rough idea about what my ending has to be or will be, though that sometimes changes too as I write. But everything in between, I do not know. I just start writing and generally I hit where I get to somewhere. So, you know, uh, I am very much a pantser. And because I am a pantser, um, I've said this to some people before, I write so that I can know what the story is. I don't know what it is. And because I don't, it keeps me interested. If I plotted out every single detail, I would hate it because then I know the story already. And then I don't, it's, there's no interest in it for me. I am the same way. I, that is why I pants. Like if I don't have, if I'm not discovering it while I'm writing it, I, I have no interest in writing it. Um, but what about what about other folks for 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 yeah. keeping yourself interested, keeping your readers interested? Um, if I can speak up as a plotter and defend our <laughs> our side of the of the writing spectrum, um, <laughs> for me, when I'm writing a series, and like I said, I can't escape these like world-ending uh, stakes. Like I want to write these really really big stories, and so I end up in series. I think the thing that keeps me interested is having this fascinating idea, like the the first book that I showed, Tide Color Chronicles. The the basic idea of it is that magic comes from our social beliefs, um, or that our belief creates magic. And so, in each setting that we go to, people have focused on one thing. Like the first book is on gender, and it becomes a very rigid norm. And magic becomes like focused into those channels. And I find that idea really fascinating. And also, the longer arc of our heroine being able to overcome them by unlearning the social norms that are that are poisonous. And so like that idea fascinates me. And then I just kind of plot out what are the points along this in the journey towards like overcoming them and becoming like a whole person or someone who's not held back by uh, dangerous beliefs. Um, mm. And so I hope that that's what keeps my readers interested too. It might just be the plot and the fights and whatever. Like I think it's different for everyone, but I want to, I planned this one to instead of being like a, I think there's two kinds of series. There's a series that it's always main plot and it's sort of like like Wheel of Time is one that I think like this where there's a million side plots but they're all going forwards towards like the final battle. And then there are more like the um, TV series series where each book is really a standalone that has little droplets of the larger story in it. And maybe the last book of the last couple books will like complete this mega arc but for the most part we're just getting like satisfying standalones with a few pieces of the larger mystery um 
And I feel like that is a really great format for a longer series because you can you can drop in those things that are keeping us reading throughout um, and give us a sense of satisfaction at the end. And then also like drop that thing of like, oh, but actually a flood is going to end the world. Uh, next book. And then they have to keep reading. So um, yeah, for me, I think it's the it's the deepest ideas and then like the progress towards them and seeing how that affects the world and the characters. Cool. Yeah. yeah, I'm a planner as well too. I have a prop. If I may, ooh, ooh. Nice. that's oh, how I outline nice. books. I do it by bribing myself with stationery. So that's how I, <laughs> um, so what keeps me, and I hope the reader interested as well is, I play with location. So book one will be this beautiful red brick small holding with pigs and sheep and whatever. Uh, book two will be in a tower, very much like Gormenghast, that kind of real claustrophobic, single location kind of thing and then book three like no spoilers or anything book three is at a port like the entirety is at this one little dingy port book four will be in a salt mine and then book five will wrap around to our beautiful red brick house again so knowing that I'm kind of literally going on a journey and hopefully when the reader realizes oh we're going to different places with these people um, for me that kind of really nice blend is what I know I'm only at the beginning, guys. Okay, but it's where I feel it'll keep me going. Fingers crossed. Oh, that's good. <laughs> and uh, Jenny, I think you were gonna add, or oh, well, I was just say this is so interesting hearing all this stuff from you guys because I feel like I do a little bit of each thing that you guys have mentioned so far, which is so interesting. Um, I've actually done both hardcore plotting and totally pantsing. Um, for the romantic epic fantasy series, I started hardcore plotting that one. Um, and it, I actually still enjoyed it because even though I had, I mean, it wasn't full, like every scene was not entirely planned out, but you know, I would have these big events pretty much roughly planned out. And I'd be so excited to like get to that point and really like flesh it out. But then pantsing, I find it interesting because um, I actually had to write short in order to write epic so like I kept trying to write these massive epic novels and I kept failing like they were just a mess like I couldn't figure out how to wrangle them into like a cohesive whole essentially uh, and then I ended up co-authoring a um, funny space opera series and each book was like 75,000 words max which to me at that time was really short because my novels were all ending up like 200,000 words but after I wrote that trilogy like for some reason that made things click somehow I don't know but when I started the Lucky Logan series uh, which is my I mean, biggest world by far the funny thing is is that I went into it entirely pantsing I didn't know anything about anything essentially um, the first book in that series was only 75,000 words so I was like oh score you know I got shorter books I can put these out faster and of course every book since then is like 100,000 words but <laughs> um, it was interesting because as I was pantsing that first book the world building just started like clicking I mean it was just it was weird it was like going down a train track and then they were just like laying down in front of me as I was going and the world just started growing and growing and growing um, and so for me at this point with this massive world, my interest is just exploring that world. And, and then it's more of that discovery of like, what is gonna happen next? And yes, I am going, like I'm almost done with book three now and I have no idea what's gonna happen in book four at this point. I know what has to happen according to my, my six book, you know, vague arc, but I'm just like, and yes, I do still kind of panic because I did mostly plot before this series. This is my first series where I'm like really legitimately pantsing and I do get nervous sometimes, but I just, uh, it's the characters I think really. Mm -hmm. um, I really, really like my characters. I'm fascinated by them. Like I really can't wait to see what they're going to do next. <laughs> so um, that definitely keeps me interested. And then the locations, mm -hmm. uh, like Eve was saying, I realized as you were saying that I kind of did the same thing, although not even really on purpose, but each book has kind of like a central location that it's based around. Um, so that's been fun to play with the different locations. Um, so yeah, I guess that's, hopefully it also keeps readers interested. That's and then nice. yes, I do the little droplets of uh, each book kind of has its mm -hmm. own, you know, arc, but then hints at the bigger arc. So hopefully that also keeps people interested because they want to know like, what is the big picture here? 
And so, Wendy, um, I think we haven't heard from you. Actually, and did we, I can't yeah. even remember who else. Who else. <laughs> actually, no, I actually don't know who answered this question yet. But, <laughs> Wendy. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think with me it definitely tends to be the characters that keep my interest. Um, all of my books are very, very character-driven. Um, I find that that's a really good way to be because I get a lot of crossover from my science fiction readers. They'll just come straight over to my fantasy and vice versa. I've been found that really surprising and then I remembered, ah, yes, I'm, I'm a character-driven writer, so the characters from one are going to attract people to the same sort of thing in the other type, even if they're not the same genre. So that's what keeps me interested. I really love crafting these characters, seeing them change, making them change. And as I grow as a writer, I get better at um, expressing that change and showing it in not even just a more realistic way, but in a way that hopefully will grab people's hearts a bit better. And like a lot of you guys, I'm a pantser, I do occasionally plot and it looks sort of something like this when I do, um, which is not actually plotting at all. It's just basically ideas scribbled down so I don't forget them. I write them down and then I never look at them again because then it's sort of in my head, which does make things a little bit difficult for longer series because there's too much to remember. But part of the joy of being a pantser is just going with the story and seeing where it goes, but not just seeing where it goes because I don't know about you guys who are pantsers as well, but I tend to find that stuff that I've put earlier in the books has been fermenting away in my back brain and then it comes back into another book further on as if I had plotted it the most intricately you would ever wish for, but it wasn't. It just burped out of my subconscious and that's basically all it is. So like Tao was saying earlier, I know the very end and I know where I start with and I know I've got some vague ideas about the theme and the threads that I want to explore or what I want to do with the characterization. but everything else is an adventure of how I'm going to get to that very cool end point and I can't stop till I get to that cool end point. But if I start to try and really plot things out, then for me that takes away the fun of it. Um, I can do it that way, but it has to be a very loose, a very, very loose plot, like just what I showed you guys. They're just a bunch of, I don't know, a bunch of chuck up on the sheet basically <laughs> is what it is. So that's pretty much how I keep myself interested is the characterization, which hopefully keeps the readers interested as well, and just going on a journey to discover. I'm basically Bilbo Baggins. I'm, I'm going on an adventure. So, yeah, <laughs> that's me. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so is that, I, we, do we hear from everybody now? Am, am I not making that up in my head? Okay, great. Um, <laughs> um, so like a lot of really cool ideas there. And, um, and I do kind of love the, the, the plotter versus pantser way of going through a series and keeping yourself interested. But what's cool, especially cool to me is that it sounds like most of the ways to keep oneself interested are kind of the same. Um, the primary difference being that, that pantsers have the added bit of finding crap out at the time, you know, just like, <laughs> um, but, but even, I, it sounds like even, even plotters are discovering new things as they write, right? Like it's never just like, oh, I know exactly what happens. And the only thing that's missing is to write it down. Although I think there, there may be some people who write that way, but it sounded like Levi from what you said, like you're still learning stuff, but you, you, yeah. So that's super fun. Um, there, oh, we're getting questions in the audience. We're getting, we have more questions here and we've got, 20 minutes more or less to, to keep going. So I'm, I'm trying to like prioritize what to talk about next. But uh, actually Tao brought up a really cool thing that I kind of want to discuss and it's a little bit off the cuff, but I, I'm curious what everyone thinks. Um, how do you feel about obligation to the reader? Tao mentioned like, well, if, if I get hit by a truck tomorrow, I want, I have the ending written down. Like, and so pres presumably a loved one of Tao's could like show up and like post that to the internet to be like, here readers, this is how everything ends. Um, do you have anything similar? Is that something you think about, worry about? Uh, like, I know that personally, I'm always nervous until the book is like a whole book that someone could read. And then I'm like, okay, if I die tomorrow, my editor can clean it up and it goes out. But I feel that on a book to book basis, I, ha I didn't necessarily feel that as like a series thing, but how do people feel about that? Like, do you have the ending so that just in case, you know, like <laughs> your estate can share that with the world? I'm very curious. Uh, I I don't have that, but I think that's brilliant. <laughs> um, I think that's a really good idea. 
So um, I definitely am going to do that now. So because, writing it down right now, yeah, emailing like, it to, to a family member. Notes because I definitely, um, yeah, I, I think that's a brilliant idea. I would, I mean, I definitely know that if, I mean, my, my epic series doesn't have like a huge readership by any means, but I do know that the readers who do read it and love it would be very, very upset if they never got an, into it. So um, I'm definitely going to do that now. <laughs> <laughs> I've had plans to do it for the last four or five months, maybe. Um, but like everything that I have plans to do, it's a process from being like, I have to do this. I have to remember to do this. I'll remember it, but it'll be like when I'm in the shower or in the middle of the night. And so I don't do it. So from starting to decide this is a good idea, I should do this to actually getting it done. I mean, it could be another half year yet. So hopefully I don't <laughs> die in the meantime. So yeah, if I do, apologies to the readers <laughs> out there. <laughs> well, that's one thing I like about um, planning and stuff is that like, Okay, not too minutia, but like if that's a chapter outline, like that's the chapter structure and they're the notes that need to go in. If I kick the bucket in the morning, you can just hire a ghostwriter, like <laughs> just do a kickstarter to finish it off and they can just slot in and be like, oh, okay, chapter three, part four, this happens right at the end. That'd be fine. <laughs> that's put that actually, out there now so you all know. <laughs> that's fair, right? Like that is an interesting part of like when you seriously plot, someone really could theoretically come in and yep. at least get the, the, the structure down. Like the, here's what actually happens. Here are all the plot points. Levi, is that similar would to you? What? I mean, if, if, if someone did hire a ghostwriter, would you at least haunt them to make it a legitimate ghostwriting? <laughs> I would try. Only when, <laughs> only when they finish, when I like get a chance to read it as a ghost, and then I'll judge them in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd try to like possess their, possess their body and just get it done. <laughs> oh, right? yeah, even yeah. better. There you go. Okay. That, yeah, would, work. Uh, that would work nicely. So I, I have things really plotted out, but... Um, but I like in this series, talking about keeping the readers interested and also the writer, I need to write a fifth book for this series. And I realized that book four uh, ends really happily just ignoring one character. And if I left off the epilogue, like people could finish the series happy. And so that's what I did. And I can write book five if I want to. Um, but yeah, I think that if you, if, each book is not so much of an awful cliffhanger. I feel like like we've done our part, you know, like if they've had a satisfying conclusion, because I mean, there are some authors and we won't name names who take 10 years to put out a sequel and people have to live with that and they're definitely going to die at some point. We're all human. So like the speed at which you write is not something you can change that easily. So I think we have to just make each book satisfying. And then like, if we get hit by that bus, <laughs> I guess like put in the will that I want this ghostwriter to do it because they do a good job. I've heard some <laughs> authors talk about like, if I do die, I want this person to finish it, you know, and I don't know. So I guess we all have to pick that, that ghostwriter and make sure they're okay with it. <laughs> That's kind of like casting the actors for your biofilm. Totally. Like, I feel like that's, I, wow. I haven't even thought about that, but now I want to, now I want to just pick. <laughs> I want to just pick who, who would I choose? I get, you know what? I get Miracle to do it. <laughs> I can do it. Like, I'll get Miracle to write my, my <laughs> books if I die. But the problem is, is that I don't plot enough. Like I, if I die today, the next book that's coming out is good enough that it'll be fine. But uh, there's no, like, no one's going to have any clue. Like, I don't even know what's going to happen in the next book. So <laughs> there's nothing for anyone to write. Um, I just have to be like, make it up, make it good. <laughs> Just, just speculate, you know, and yeah, just guess. take it your own direction. Finish it <laughs> off. <laughs> um, but actually, I, yeah, I, I'm kind of joking. I don't know if I, I don't know who I would pick to write my books in my stead. T. Kingfisher. <laughs> that's that's who I want to write my books. Like Ursula. Vernon. I honestly wouldn't want anyone to. I'd be like, no yeah. stuffiers. This is it. <laughs> that's all you're getting. That's Nobody it. dare touch it. It's my stuff. Don't touch it. That is fair. So, yeah. yeah. Kind of feel that way too. Well, I was Sorry. gonna say your fans could could uh you know finish it off in like fan fiction. Oh, that'd be awesome. And it's not official, but yeah. they just closure, spiral so. a million different directions. Yeah, there yeah you that go. could be fun. And then choose each person own. can have the ending that they want. <laughs> it's a choose your own adventure right at the end of the series because the author died. <laughs> Write your own last book. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah, choose your own adventure. Perfect. 
I like that. I like that. I think the 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 big series that we all know of that we're waiting on on last books or last couple books. I feel like uh, we should all, if if anything happens, heaven forbid, we should all just uh, feel comfortable to fan fiction that up. Um, <laughs> personally, <laughs> some, some of them. Oh wait, Miracle says uh, suddenly experiencing a lot of anxiety. I'm just kidding, kidding Miracle. I'm sorry, I will. You don't have to write my books. Um, please don't. I feel like you need to. I I was totally joking. It's just because you're you're just so good, but you actually have a very different voice from me. So I don't even know if it would work. <laughs> um, but she just jumped in to say that she's panicked. Um, okay. <laughs> um, so um, gosh, we have we have so many amazing uh, comments and potentially questions here popping up. Um, that I, I, let's see, we got 15 minutes left. I don't know. Uh, let's talk about, hmm. Let's just talk about when a series is finished. Um, what makes, what, like, and I don't know, I don't think we have to go into this super long I, I, because I think it can be a fairly short answer. Personally, I think a series is finished when the story is done. Right. But of course, there are, if your series is loose standalones, then it can go on forever. Right. So there's the potential potentiality for infinite series. Um, so when it comes to your own series, like what is it? A, is it a like, OK, this is the culmination of this actually like epic plot point And therefore it's done like my Victoria Marmot series is done because the world threatening event was dealt with. And and that's it. There we go. End of story. And it's, you know, it's a humorous series. So I don't think it's a spoiler to let everyone know that, you know, they that the heroes succeed. Um, <laughs> but um, like, you know, the other books you might like, you know, worry about that, but this is, you know. Uh, so, but what what about, what about in other series? Like my my other, my Ginsokai books can kind of go on forever because I, there's all kinds of things for me to play with in the history there, et cetera. So how do y'all decide when a series is done? I feel like I would say whenever, uh, if there's still passion there, either on my part, I'll keep writing them because I love them. Or if I feel done and the fans are like, you have to do this, or we need to get this point of view, or we need to finish that one. Then I think I feel an obligation to keep going. Like um, this series has been uh, re republished in the books three and four coming out in the next two months. And there's a lot of new readers finding them. And I think if they get mad at me for leaving off that, ending to before and they're like we never found out what happened to the other character i will find a way to be passionate about it too or borrow theirs to write it but i think otherwise if i don't have it and they don't have it the series is definitely done um or if you have it but there's other things that are driving you more and the readers aren't begging for it then good enough <laughs> money, um, but, yeah, go ahead, Tom. oh i was yeah. gonna say money passion story if any of those finish then you're done right um, <laughs> in that order <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm relatively practical on that. Um, I will always finish a story, uh, but sometimes I will truncate what I was planning uh, just because it's not paying me to write it anymore because readers aren't reading it anymore. So, you know, there's no real point in not finishing it uh, and, fin and keep, you know, writing. Extending it, yeah. I don't um, tend to truncate anything if people aren't reading it as much as I want them to, especially if I really love it. Like my science fiction series is my least read out of all my out of all my books, though I get most of um, my male readers through there. But with me, I love it so much and it was what I always wanted to do with writing. So although I haven't cut it off short, I do only release one of those books every couple of years. So I started publishing in 2015 and there's only three of those books for six years. So roughly every two years, I'll put a new book in that series out. And the people who love it, they really love it. But also it's not got a huge readership. So I still keep writing it because I love it, but also, yeah, just more slowly. But when it comes to standalone series, um, mine ended up being in a really big circle so that it sort of bit its own tail um, because time travel somehow got involved. But anyway, the Two Monarchy series has some points at which it can um, spike off into another series so it's still part of that world but it's a different series and with again with the city between one I'll have a spin-off series as well so for me that one will be complete once the main plot points and the main character development is all done and then I can move on to the next 
um, spin-off series for that. But for everything else, it's usually either when the story comes to an end or when the emotional resolution feels like it's complete. Um, I don't mind leaving off without having a completed romance. I'm quite fine with that. Sometimes readers are not, and I've had to do what Levi was talking about and um, and add a short story or just a bit onto something just to give people some closure. Um, mm-hmm. I'm more about subtlety in romance than actually necessarily always showing everything um, on the page. So um, that can be hard for readers sometimes, and the reader expectation if you're not writing sometimes will want me to do that. Yeah, if you're not writing genre yeah, romance, I don't there's really. an obligation, right? So if you're just writing a romance in the story, you can do whatever you like, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and mostly I do. But every now and then I'm like, well, there's enough people asking for this and they obviously love it <laughs> and I do like those characters and so I'll just do a bit extra. And, yeah, yeah and that's fun too. But so long as you've got the passion for it. Yeah. D- I- does anyone else feel, like, strongly differently about the various uh, ways a series wraps? Yeah. Um, because unless we got no a, comment, because I haven't finished anything yet. <laughs> okay, fair. <laughs> um, then, uh, then yeah, does Jenny, if you do agree with that in general, I yeah, agree. Okay, <laughs> then we'll move on. Just because we've got, we do have more questions. Um, I'm trying. Sorry, I'm trying to sort through all the 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 chat comments here. And actually, so I'm gonna say because we've got eight minutes left, and we've got a lot a lot of reader uh, questions in. The chat it's been very active over there if y'all get a chance um unfortunately it's it takes like 12 hours to process because reasons but anyway eventually the the live chat will come back um to this posted video and if y'all want to go through and comment um you can you can no longer comment in the live chat but you can watch it and then you can leave permanent comments on the on the page so if there are any questions anyone wants to continue to answer um we can also go a tiny bit over because of where the next um event lies but but we not a ton so um let's see um someone asked uh, have you ever fixed this is the number of books in this series and then had the length of the book count up had to lengthen the book count up oh had to like make it longer or sh- yeah have you ever had to change the length of a series um i'll start on that just because like i <laughs> Levi's just like just bailed out before book five um <laughs> i have certainly um the the victoria marmot series i had originally planned nine books when like my vague outlining of like okay then this plot point this plot point this plot point and then i wound up shoving those into five books largely because i found some of those plot points redundant and so i was like uh you know what i can actually do without this and without this and kind of smush these into this and then and that worked out well but um other people changing changing a predicted book length or a series length I'm probably going to have to do that with the Thousand Lee series. Uh, as I said, I was supposed to be a quartet of trilogies. It's probably the second part of the trilogy section is probably going to expand much more than I expected um, just because of things I wrote myself into. <laughs> Um, but that's that's cool expanding um do you feel like readers ever are upset about a series getting longer than you thought I I feel like that most readers probably are cool with that Um, I don't know um I haven't done it yet so we'll find out um if I can say from financially I think realistically the smart thing is to do is finish up at about nine books in the main series and call it Mm-hmm. Um, I know that book 10 onwards, you start kind of seeing a drop a little bit. Uh, Unless you're Will White. But uh, <laughs> it's not a horrible drop, but it is happening. Um, yeah. So it's something to keep in mind, right? It's good to know. Yeah, I, I don't, I haven't had to do it yet, but I, I, I might for the, for the Lucky Logan series with the way things are just getting so complex. So I would not be surprised at all. I'll say if I get to book six and realize there's gonna have to be seven, I would prefer to be six because it is sort of like a pair of trilogies. <laughs> we keep talking about these sets of trilogies. So that series is, is kind of meant to be two sets of trilogies. Yeah, but, um, but it would not really surprise me if I had to add a book seven, but I mean, I am gonna try to keep it to six. The only way I'd really extend it one extra book is if it's just too much to handle in the in the book six so we'll see if you wind up with a 300,000 word book six you might you right might be like put... this is not gonna work <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly 
Um, yeah, that's I don't a... think I've had to do that with with mine. I don't know how because with being a panther, I, it should have happened at some point. But it seems that I'm actually really good at judging how long both the book and the series are going to be. So normally when I start a book, depending on what series it's in, I can tell you pretty much exactly the amount of chapters it's going to have and how many words roughly will be in each chapter. Um, and that's been pretty consistent up until the last couple of books with the City Between series where there's lots of uh, lots of extra content that I needed to put in, but that's only blown out the chapter length. that hasn't blown out the series length. So I'm still hoping to keep my record clean and be, be like, well, I can't plan my way out of a paper hat, but I can tell you how many books are going to be in this series and I will stick with it. Um, so <laughs> hopefully that stays. Pretty sweet. I, uh, yeah, I, I feel completely unqualified to predict how many books are going to be in any of my series because <laughs> <laughs> every time I try, I am wrong. So I'm just going to stop guessing. Um, I'm actually, but Eve, I'm curious, I know you haven't finished yet, but like, do you feel, does it feel strongly like, you know, you've, you've done two, you've got three more planned. Does it right now, does it feel like you're on the money for, for how long that's going to go? Yeah. And that's kind of why I didn't want to put in because <laughs> yes, fair enough. It just could, I could say something and then the complete opposite could be said when I'm standing with five books done. <laughs> but I mean, the plan, which will of course survive first contact with the enemy is, <laughs> The line in the sand is five books. And I think then I will stand and look around and collect myself and then go from there. I think I've committed to five. Let's go with five. <laughs> you do seem to plan intricately enough that it seems likely you'll be correct, right? I mean, like if, if you've got those detailed plots going, then. Yeah. And what's nice is like I juggle this on top of, say, an, a full time job in law. So my time is a little constrained. So the planning really helps take any kind of pressure or worry off of um, this kind of thing. So I, I, it looks insane. I like my spreadsheets. I like my big charts. I like my notebooks. Um, and it gives me confidence then that I can get to five. Yeah. Yay, Levi. Yeah. <laughs> but that's great. And so actually, I want to take a minute because we've got actually a lot of authors in the chat asking questions. And so I would like to talk a little bit about tools that we use to keep our series on track as planners and, uh, and pantsers both. Um, do you use uh, certain kinds of software, certain kinds of, of, of notes? Do you make maps? Do you make character sheets? What do you use? I love Scrivener and Timeline, Aeon Timeline personally, um, which I need because I have this thousand year history that I have to keep tabs on. And then it also just helps me plot out each, keep track of each of the, the, the time pieces in the book. And it helps me with character ages and stuff as I, cause like this next book has started seven years after the last book. And like, how old is everybody then? And like, how old are their children? And if they've got any, et cetera. So um, yeah, what do y'all do? What do you find works for you? Um, I like pen and paper because I sit in front of a computer all day, every day. Mm -hmm. So as Levi, I should also wave my pages around. So that would be the outline of say half of a novel right there. And I like the kind of top down view. Sometimes with software like Shrivener, it's great for the minutia, but you can't get that really kind of big top down level look. And mm -hmm. sometimes I will rip these A3 sheets out, plaster them on the floor and just kind of look at them like God above them all. Um, so that's my tool, pen and paper. <laughs> Very good. I was gonna say I'm a little bit old school. I just have uh, Microsoft Word documents and I use the hyperlink functions in them. So it's like in charts, usually plot character setting and then some extra columns over there for the actual books. And that becomes like a like an atlas or a wiki for the book. And then for the series, there's a separate, much larger, like often 40,000 word document that has a ton of hyperlinks to find like this culture is like magic system, this culture is like dress code or whatever, so that I can find all that stuff quickly and add to it as it's like, because even if you're a planner, you're still coming up with stuff on the moment when you meet someone like, I guess they would greet people like this and you add it in. So I just mm -hmm. have these massive Microsoft Word documents. Interesting. Yeah, I, I've tried <clears throat> some different software. Um, I use notebook. Uh, dot AI for a while, which has places for like your you, your world building, your magic systems, your characters, your objects, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I use Notion sometimes even now just to throw research links in because I'll read something and then I'll never find the link again. And then I'm, I think I'm going to remember it and I don't. And then I'm like, oh crap, where did I see that? So I've started a Notion <laughs> now to just throw all those links in so I can go back and check stuff if I need to. Um, 
but I, yeah, I stare at a computer all day as well for my day job. So I get really sick of it. And I found that like, as far as like a series Bible goes, it does work better if I just use a paper and pen. So I've, I've started, um, like just a notebook, like you guys, even though I'm a pantser after the fact I go through when I'm doing edits on my book, I will, I have like a page for each location and I'll write down all the relevant details for locations, characters. Um, and then I also, I ended up, uh, I designed my own workbook. <laughs> so like, this is a page I print it from uh, Lulu so I can get the coil bound and fold it back. Ooh. But I have like, um, you know, like setting information, character injuries, because my characters get hurt all the time and I forget that they got punched in the face last chapter. So like, you know, moon phases I was love the moon phase. annoying. Yeah, that's really handy. Um, so I just made this for myself. And I also have um, a space for like chapter summaries and notes, which this is for book three. So it's not all filled out yet. Cause I usually do this when I edit. Um, while I'm editing, I'll do like a short chapter summary as well, because then in later books, if I'm like, wait, I have no idea what happened in book, whatever. I can just go back here and scroll through my summaries real fast instead of having to like reread the whole book. So That's this beautiful. has been quite handy. I really like it. <laughs> awesome. So I'm definitely going to keep using this, but put it up for sale. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people keep I saying that. I might just have to do that. <laughs> a lot of people keep telling me. I actually that. don't do too much um, for that sort of thing. I do that after during edits thing as well. Um, mostly with the city between series, because I forget, people's color of eyes and whether they drink tea or coffee um, and things like that and important things that I need to thread into later books so I do tend to write those down scribble them down in notebooks and then I lose the notebooks and then I have to dig through my room like a feral badger looking for all these notebooks that I have lost but on a day-to-day -day basis for getting the work done um, I've got a little word counter that I use and I sort of do sprints of a uh, half an hour or so and I usually get 500 to 1,000 words done during that um, half-hour sprint and I'm always listening to music. So in terms of day-to-day -day basis getting stuff done, it's music and my little word counter. Oh, and stickers. I love stickers so much. I have I have a calendar and I have so many stickers. I have little men with huge hats. I have rabbits with weird clothing. Um, I just get I get a big sticker for every two thousand words I write, and every five hundred word block after that gets like a smaller sticker that is not as grandiose. So that's that's how I that's how I motivate myself basically. That's awesome. That's that's very cool. I usually like give myself an X amount of time to read after I've finished a certain number of words and stuff for daily motivation. But in terms of software, um, I, I, so Wendy, the reason I wanted to jump in and mention it is because I have ADHD and I cannot keep track of a notebook to save my life. So I will, I, I have used notebooks in the past or tried to, but I inevitably wind up losing them and then I have to panic to find them. And so Scrivener has saved me because if I could just to keep the loose papers all in one spot. And writing is my day job. So I do spend a lot of time staring at the computer, but it's all for writing anyway. And so Scrivener is like my lifesaver. So because... With Scrivener, I, I can't make it work for me. I need the tactile it's Totally fair. Thing. I, yeah. For me, it works because it, it saves me the anxiety of losing my notes. And so mm. and for me, that's, that's huge. Um, Tao, do you want to just jump in on, do you have any? Um... I'm boring. I use Microsoft Word. Um, I have at the end of all the current book I have, I have a, my world building notes and I just copy and paste whatever I write into the back, into the bottom of the world building notes. So that just, so book one is generally small. And by the time it gets to book 10, it's huge. Um, <laughs> yeah, I and, do that one as well. Yeah. That's cool. Um, I have an Excel, I use Excel as well because um lit RPG author. So I have a <laughs> right, whole have Excel with <laughs> formulas and everything involved. That's where I also stick all my timeline information in for each book. There's timeline and ages and dates and everything so that I know where everyone's level is, what, mm. how old it is, how long it's been since the start of the apocalypse or whatever. You know, <laughs> it's, it's all tracked down that way. Um, and it makes my life a lot easier that That's way. That's awesome. 
Um, unfortunately, it's we're now at a point where we kind of have to wrap because I have 10 minutes before I have to start the video for the next thing. I'm teching the next event. So um, so it's my schedule that's cutting us off, but also the, we're, we're five minutes past time already. But this has been so interesting and I feel like I could just do this all day and chat with y'all about how this works. Um, folks watching at home, thank you so much for coming. I hope this has been instructive and useful. Um, there are, like I said, still some, some questions. I think we kind of answered at least the gist of most of them. Um, uh, Rob Hayes wrote in, it was like, how do you avoid, uh, you know, losing steam on a, on a series? And I feel like we kind of covered that a bit. So anyway, um, there, there are some more questions there. If y'all want to go look at those once they've processed, um, you can do that. To everyone watching, thank you so much for being here. And um, I hope that you'll enjoy our next event, which is world building. I think, let me double check the schedule. Yes, world building in sci-fi and fantasy. We have some amazing guests. Um, these were already some amazing guests and I wanna thank them all for being here. Um, so thank you so much to everyone on this panel. Y'all are fantastic. Uh, I feel like today is like our, we're really going out strong because this panel was so amazing and so much fun. Um, and uh, basically everyone go check the website to see more information. You can check out more information about all of our individual panelists here. You can also find them all on Twitter. Uh, go to the QuarenCon Twitter account. We recently tweeted about this panel and tagged everybody in it. So you can find each of their accounts there. Please go buy all of their books um, and uh, also buy our merch. Um, go to our website and check that out. Um, next event again in uh, 30, less than 30 minutes at this point. Um, <laughs> so starting at noon uh, central is the world building um, SFF, world building and SFF panel. It's, uh, uh, can't talk anymore. It's going to be great is essentially what I was trying to say, but I picked weird words and then couldn't say them. Um, <laughs> anyway. I'm now just rambling. I'm going to end this to put myself out of my misery. Um, thank you all so much for coming. And we'll see you in the next event. Bye, y'all. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye.